The Augusta Coliseum Authority has been studying whether ice hockey should make a comeback. Now that's if voters agree to a half penny sales tax to help pay for a new James Brown arena. Fans fell in love with hockey when the Lynx came to town more than a decade ago. John Whitwell was one of the Canadians who moved here with the team and never left. He's our studio guest this morning, one on one with Richard Rogers. John, welcome. Good to have you with us this morning. For viewers who don't remember, we're talking about 1998 here. What do you remember about those early years with the Lynx? Well, I remember playing in that very first game before going down to the arena. I was reading in the paper. They were telling fans when to cheer, when not to cheer. And I was thinking to myself, what am I getting myself into? <laughs> we knew nothing about hockey in no Augusta, Georgia. Nothing. And who knew how successful it would be those first several years. We got some pictures from the early days we're going to put up right behind us. Here's the old team. Uh, you're, you're in several of these shots. Here's a young John Whitwell right here. Uh, tell me about bonding with these guys. And were a lot of you from Canada? Yeah, uh, we're actually from all over the world. We had some guys from Sweden, Russia, um, a lot from Canada, yeah. some American guys. And, you know, we spent a lot of time together traveling around uh, city to city on a bus. And, <laughs> you know, I mean, you really are brothers and it's amazing. It was so much fun. Those are the that's the biggest part I miss about it is the the camaraderie of the teammates. It's, it becomes family. And, and as you said, you, you landed in a town that really didn't understand hockey at all. What was the early response to the Augusta Lynx that you remember? It was unbelievable. We would go to restaurants and, and that after games, they would set us up with, uh, you know, different places to go. And we would walk in, there'd be standing ovations. And it was just unbelievable. It was completely beyond expectations. I was looking back over some of the stories we did all those years ago, and in your second season, I think uh, the report was that we had 6,000 people in the James Brown Arena watching that first game. Yeah. The second season. That, that's right. And even the, the first few years, we had uh, great support um, from the town. It, it was so much fun to play in. And like the downtown arena, the ice surface was relatively small compared to other arenas in the, in the league. So teams really didn't like coming here because we had a, a bigger physical team. And, you know, we had a ho definitely home ice advantage with the yeah. crowd. It was a great place. And, and, and me and my family, we, we started watching the Lynx. Our kids went to their first ice hockey game here in Augusta, Georgia. And I probably got on the ice for one of the very few times of my life being a <laughs> Southern kid. So you guys are really ambassadors. I remember you being part of the Children's Miracle Network telethon. You would come and help us raise money for the Children's Hospital. It, and stuff like that, that's what helps the team be successful, getting out in the community. I always enjoyed that, going into schools, reading the kids. We do the um, we go into the auditorium at the schools and dress some kids in the different equipment and things like that. And that was to me that was fun. Yeah. And that's really the community engagement that helped you know with the success of the team. You guys were plugged into the community. You really were. Now for viewers who weren't here at the time, uh, we the Lynx left town in 2009. The Riverhawks came in for a minute or two, a season or two, and then something happened at the, at the arena. They couldn't make ice anymore. Correct. So there's, uh, there's piping systems encased in the cement floor. That's what freezes the ice from underneath. That's why it's not so cold when you go to the, you know, the arena. You don't need a you know, heavy jacket necessarily. But the, uh, the, I think it's whatever the fluid is, like a Freon or whatever, remained in those pipes and wasn't flushed throughout the years, and it ended up eroding. So they can't maintain the ice in the, in the existing James Brown Arena. So uh, it got too expensive to fix. Uh, hockey went away, which brings us to today. Were you surprised when you heard that the Coliseum Authority was actually studying the possibility of a, a return of ice hockey to Augusta? Not necessarily surprised, but I was excited about the prospect of, of building a new arena and, you know, having this gem downtown Augusta. So what do the numbers show? I think I, I, we read that the study showed there would be an increase of 203% uh, to the net operating income of the Augusta Entertainment Complex. A 200% increase in income? I that, mean, what do you think of that number? That, that's just with the addition of hockey. So that, that's how important it is to have the ice system built into the new arena. Um, it, it's going to create a lot of activity downtown. And it, there'll be 36 home games minimal without any playoffs each year. You know, our, our downtown restaurants and bars would absolutely love that influx of people coming downtown many more times each year. So you're, uh, I'm, uh, you're not going to be political today, but you're, you sound like you would vote for this, this uh, half-cent sales tax to support a new James Brown Arena, 
with ice on the floor. Absolutely. The way I look at it, it's an investment with those numbers that we're talking about. The economic impact is like 1.6 billion, I believe. You know, that, that's a, to me, that's a great investment. So while you're building an arena, go ahead and spend the extra money. Do you know how much more money it costs to get an ice floor in a typical arena? Is it very expensive? Uh, it, it ranges depending on, we've heard numbers from four to four to six or eight million, mm -hmm. depending, depending on, you know, how far along the, um, the plans already are. Sure. Okay, so you've been there, you've done that, and, uh, and now we're looking ahead. Is there a spot for Augusta to have a, a, a team that's affiliated with maybe the ECHL, the East Coast Hockey League? Does that still exist? It does. Um, we actually have an ownership group that is committed to, to bring an ECHL franchise back to Augusta if we do have a new arena built. And, you know, the community it has really grown over the last 25 years since I moved here in 98. You know, just the... The influx of people through the different, you know, um, parts of the city growing, the fort, you know, downtown, cyber, everything, yeah. cyber. You know, we've got people coming from all over, uh, really, the world to our area. Those are hockey fans. And, and they're hockey cases, fans, aren't absolutely. They? And, and, you know, it's often, often said that hockey won't work in a non-traditional market, but you look at the NHL, look at the, where the teams are. They're not in non, or they're not in traditional markets. And they're very, very successful. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, would the Lynx name live on? Did anybody claim our name and logo, or is it still out there for us? Well, uh, what would you like to see that, on that? That that's currently up in the air. We'd absolutely love to have the Lynx name back. Yeah. you know, because it, it's already uh, ingrained in, in local people's minds. So sure. it, it'd be fantastic if we can bring that back. Before I let you go, will you hold up the jersey and tell us about? Uh, what, this is one of your keepsakes from those years. Is that this is a game jersey? Yeah, this is a, a game worn jersey. Um, Flip it around. Yeah. Number three. Number three. I wore it's, number three my entire life. It's Whitwell right it, there. Whitwell, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, th this, uh, this has seen many, many, many battles over the, the uh, course of the season that I wore this one. That's I'm for surprised sure. it's not bloodstained. Did you ever get into <laughs> some uh, scuffles there on the ice? Uh, or was that your job to I, get into scuffles? Well, it wasn't necessarily my job, but I did get in a few. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, how many Canadians or others uh, from out of town ended up staying in Augusta and making this their home like you did? Uh, so aside from myself, uh, there's probably eight or nine of us that played with the Lynx or the Riverhawks at one point that are still here locally. Wow. And, you know, we we uh, we joke around. We could ice a pretty good men's league team right now if we, <laughs> if we could get some ice back in town. You got to get some ice around. You got to drive to find ice around here. So you stayed. You had a family. Now you've got kids in Augusta and a career in Augusta. So um, what if you? What about? How do you feel about it coming full circle here for the hockey to return? I I would love nothing more. My kids were were still pretty young when the um, when the hockey left, but. You know, my daughter, she, she'll be 19 here in a month or so, and, you know, to this day she still says she's a hockey player. Wow, how about that? Yep. John Whitwell, Augusta Lynx alum, thanks for sharing some pictures with us. Uh, young John there and uh, kind of a mean-looking dude right over here. But uh, <laughs> ice hockey came to Augusta. I remember it well. We were live there the uh, opening night uh, for our newscast, and Augusta just responded in a big way. Yep, absolutely, and I appreciate you having me out today. We'll see you soon. Thank you.